Hello everybody, good evening and welcome and happy birthday to us, us all, Team Tortoise, Tortoise members, one and all. Um, it's lovely to see you, you know who I am, I'm Liz mostly, I'm an editor and partner here and um, on the eve of the long weekend um, we just thought we'd have a bit of silliness, we did a drink in back in the newsroom um, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe 18 months ago, where I was compelled to host it and made a very, very strong Negroni right at the beginning and drank it. And then I'm afraid slurred my words all the way through the remainder of the thinking, serving cocktails to the assembled throng and have hence been known as two soups because it all became a little bit Julie Walters. Um, it's lovely to have you here. Um, thank you very much, um, not just for coming this evening and joining in a bit of cocktail making silliness, but also um, just for being here all along, really. Um, it's a total team effort, as you know, and um, it's a real pleasure. Almost like we planned it, that the day we turn two officially is the day that the membership number, the magic membership number, tipped just over 100,000 members. Um, so a landmark day um, in more ways than one. I'm going to start this evening um, with a bit of a chat with James, um, Tortoise co-founder and editor, um, on some sort of reflections of the journey so far. I mean, it's sort of two years for lots of us, but it's considerably longer than that for you. So. How are you feeling, James? <laughs> um, as you know, Liz, I'm a weeper. So you <laughs> doesn't take very much for me to choke up. So I don't know, were you the, do you remember that day at the end of the very first week that we launched? And on the, at this time on a Friday, I stood up and just wanted to say thank you to everyone <laughs> and got halfway through that first sentence, <laughs> cracked. <laughs> cracked and you can see that look across the room that goes from excitement and emotion to extreme awkwardness yeah we were all worried we thought oh no he's, he's not gonna make it. he's <laughs> not gonna make it in the first week let alone the first 10 years <laughs> so so in more ways than one i'm pleased that we've just kept uh we've kept going um uh, my family has a history uh, on my grandmother's side the alexanders they're weepers and we weep mostly and most acutely and incredibly um uh with, with a great volume and moments of great happiness so we so you know watch out for the course of this hour uh, i could be very tearful I, I i suppose i tell you one thing i would like to say though is and it's really really been an amazing thing this which is that we started our thinkings in the room Right. And the thing that was amazing was the idea that we would have an open newsroom when Katie and I first talked about tortoise. We talked about what would be the words we would use to describe tortoise. And Katie said, oh, we want a newsroom that's welcoming. And that was such an unnewsy word. <laughs> no, you know, if you can think about it, you know, there was never a moment when you know, Kay Graham and Ben Bradley said, you know, what are we going to do with the Washington Post? I know, let's make it welcoming. <laughs> and and, um, and the strange thing was that, of course, when we held those thinkings in person, it was welcoming if you could get there, mm. right? It was welcoming when you were in the room. And the thing that I'm sitting here that's changed is it's welcoming in a different way. I tend to, when I do the thinking, so I don't know whether you do the same, Liz, I tend to move to that gallery view so you can see as many people as possible. And you can actually, strangely enough, you can connect, you can see people, you can see them more clearly. And it's funny how even in a room, you can't get the reaction that you get quite as directly. So the thing that's been amazing about this second year, I was thinking was, we haven't had those experiences that you have in person or out on the road because we've been stuck, but we have got to know people, really feel like you know people in a way that I never expected. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, I, I, we went into the newsroom yesterday, actually, there was a couple of us had to go in for one reason and another couldn't do it at home. And it felt so nice. But the weird thing about our new newsroom is we've never had members there because we were in the old newsroom where we did the festivals and everything, it was home. And then we moved and then the world closed down. So I think that will be a real moment when we get to whenever it is, maybe end of June, when we can finally sort of have people coming 
back in again. Just tell us, I know you need to skedaddle, you can't be here the whole time, but tell us a little bit about the next 12 months of Tortoise. What are you thinking about? Where are we going to go? What's going to be different? What's going to be new? What's coming? So I think, I think, well, probably this gang of people will tell me actually where we should go, because the thing that's been amazing is that members do tell you, right? They really do say this is working or that's not working. And, and we really have tried to respond to it to respond to that. I think some things that we've seen that we didn't see a year ago, certainly didn't see two years ago. One is we've been really amazed by how much people want to listen and listen to stories. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really energized by this idea of narrative journalism. You know, you, you saw it, you know, uh, I think Liz, I think it was Susie who gave us the tip off about the Embroideries yeah. Guild, yeah. right? That's a story we wouldn't necessarily have seen, but it was a story about the way in which the kind of cult of the market forces can take over things that are points of passion and the clash between money and hobbies and between Claudia and Basha and the team there. We told a story that was a story of the times and it's not surprising that, you know, that, um, slow newscast went live on Monday and already you're hearing people get in touch with us saying could we make that into a tv program or a film and I think there's something for us to learn from the year in which we've all been stuck in front of the screen mm -hmm. and it's about stories as a way of understanding the world right so if you think about it a journalist like me we grew up a big story was a double page spread in a newspaper or an hour-long documentary but it still had the format of a news lead, an explanatory third paragraph, mm -hmm. and the back and forth of she said, he said, through for the course of the hour, through the course of the next 1800 words. And I sit here underneath the copy of Harry Evans's autobiography, and he was sort of a great guru of mine, and he was in many ways the godfather of tortoise. He was the person who originally brought together some of the people that made it possible. And it's taken a long while for me to realize that the journalism that he pioneered, that kind of campaigning investigative journalism, has in some ways been commodified in the volume of news that's breaking news. But there's a way of doing something that is as indelible as that. And it's what I think of as washing line journalism. It's taking a story, taking the experience of a person that's that's got some emotion to it, got some life to it, and say, look, if we follow that story all the way along, we're gonna be able to hang on it, a certain number of things that will help you understand the world that we're in. Mm -hmm. And so it will be investigative. It will, I hope, be impactful. It will have that campaigning quality to it, but also that it should have heart. It shouldn't be wonkery, it should be real life. And I hope that we're gonna see more of that. I think that the other second thing that I hope you'll see is that we've developed along with audio, along with our slow newscast and sense makers and audio, we develop much, much more of a sense of what we think. And, you know, the reason we're beginning to grow out slow views, a different kind of informed point of view, is that I don't think you can live through this pandemic year and not have been radicalized by the experience. So we started out with a sense of what we're for, and we set it out. I think that in the next year, we need to really articulate that. There need to be people who say, look, we come to tortoise because we're clear about hearing different points of view. That's the beauty of the thinking, but also a sense of what, what tortoise thinks as a result. And so I'm going to have a, a go at that in the next couple of weeks in terms of distilling so much of what we've heard in the series of thinkings about the battle for truth. Yeah. And I hope you'll see that in the course of what we do. But the one thing I should say is the thing that's odd is, you know, you were at the meeting yesterday, we held, you said, in the office. And, you know, it was interesting when we were talking a little about it, just a small group about, of us about what the future holds. A lot of it was about sticking to, true to the promise that we made originally. And at the heart of that is the thinking. It's still the case that the best thing we've got is an open news meeting in which we're informed by different people, actually weirdly the experience of the last year, is we, is we get to hear from more people with more and different points of view. And I think that's still the thing that we do. That's still gonna be the way that we think about and learn about the world. Thanks, James. Um, and thank you um, in general. You're, you're gonna have a week off next week. You're gonna have a long weekend and a week off, go lie down in a darkened room. And so you will 
no doubt join us for all the thinkings anyway, because I know that's how you're wired. But, um, and I'll be cuddling up to this little pendant, pendant just so you know, I'm, I'm very, very keen to make a big deal, given the scale of the investment. I know a lot of the tortoise members on things are going, <laughs> you know, when I put this money into this journalism, we were hoping you were going to flash out on the all mod comms. It's right here. There it is. Um, thanks, James. I'm going to, um, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm ready for a drink. So I'm going to come now to our first invited expert this evening, Lucia, Lucia Montanelli, um, who is an award-winning, I mean, multi-award winning drinks connoisseur, senior bartender at the bar at the Dorchester. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever been to the bar at the Dorchester, but it, it is the best place to go for a drink in London, if not the world. And if you're lucky, Lucia will be the person who will make your drink for you. The first woman to win the UK National Championship cocktail competition. I know you were a gold medalist at the World Cocktail Championships as well. I mean, if you're gonna learn a cocktail from anyone, Lucia is the person. Good evening, thank you so much for being here. And um, when is the bar opening up again, just so we're clear? First of all, good evening, everyone. <laughs> thank you very much to host me in uh, an happy birthday. For thank you very much. <laughs> so the bar at the Dorchester, the Dorchester uh, Hotel is gonna reopen in May, of course, fully reopening, but the 12th of April, the Dorchester Hotel open is uh, terrace, terraces actually. Hi. So the bar terrace is gonna open the 12th, plus we have the nice, uh, absolutely beautiful spring garden just uh, at the front of the hotel. Then we have on the top floor, on the roof, on the rooftop of the hotel, we will opening our restaurant. So the three restaurants of the Dorchester, they're gonna do the pop up up there for the first time. Up there, beautiful view. Absolutely. Hotel, what could be nicer? You can see you have beautiful, really, really beautiful view up there. You can see the Hyde Park. You can, you can see everything up there because it's yeah. actually the terrace is right at the corner of the hotel. So. Lucia, we're going to have, you're going to make for us a kombucha mojito, right? Yes. So I think I've got everything I need to do this. Let's recap Let's the ingredients. Go. Exactly. What so are we going to decide to do this uh, mojito? Uh, okay, it's quite a versatile drink. First of all, if you don't drink, uh, you can only do kombucha and fruit. If you like uh, rum, you can add rum. If you don't like rum, you can add vodka or even yeah. gin. Okay, good. If you prefer tequila, you can use tequila. It's quite a versatile drink. It's quite simple and extremely versatile. So recap the ingredients. We got kombucha. Uh, I choose the unflavored one, but if you prepare, if you prefer, there are tons of kombucha. Okay, cool. You can have passion fruit, strawberry, lime, ginger, fresh raspberry, nice. of course, mint, sugar. We got white or brown sugar cane. If you don't have that, caster sugar is, is fine. Then, lime, yes, lime juice, and uh, and alcohol. That can yeah. be, as I said, rum, vodka, tequila. Up to you, your choice. You got cachaça, perfect. Yeah. It's cachaça. It's a Brazilian version of rum. One of my favorite. Good. So, I don't know how old it is, but let's go for it anyway. Yeah, of course we're gonna need ice. Yeah. and that's it. Hey, I hope everybody can see while I'm preparing. Wine glass, I'm putting it in there, is that wrong? Up, up to you. I got, I got a nice tall glass, but it was, uh, was blue, so you couldn't see much from, so I prefer to choose the, the wine glass. Okay. If you have a long eyeball glass, a tall glass, water glass, it's fine. You are at home, you can choose whatever you want. Yeah. So, starting from squeezing some lime, I'm not using any fancy equipment there, just to let you know. It's just this a, is a cocktail masterclass DIY. So at home, you don't have to use any particular ingredients. So let's squeeze some lime. Doing it. And uh, to make a mojito, you don't have to muddle the lime. This is wrong. Oh. You need to, you need to add a lime juice in it. Okay. Not put too much, like 15 ml is more than enough. Okay. As you can see, this is a plastic cup. Mm. I'm not using fancy ingredients. So if, if you don't have a fancy jigger at home, which is the metal uh, tools for the bartender, you can take the plastic cup for the detergent of your uh, machine. Yeah. The plastic cup, oh, yeah, the actually nice. all the plastic cup are 50 ml to the top, till the top. So actually it's like a jigger. Okay. So you put the lime juice, Yep. Then you add sugar straight away. Okay. 
in order for the sugar to melt better. How much sugar do I put in? Two coffee it, spoon. Okay, yeah. If you don't want sugar, because kombucha, actually two and a half. Kombucha is an healthy, yeah. yeah. Kombucha is an healthy uh, beverage. Is a, it contains very low amount of sugar. So if you don't like to use sugar, you can use, you can use stevia, you can use uh, honey, agave, something more natural. Okay. And then you stir it. Okay. Good. I suggest you to drop a, a kombucha in it, just a tiny bit. Or if you don't like kombucha, you saw the water, yeah. better melt the sugar and the lime. Okay. So you give it a stir. It's like a small drink at the moment. I was hoping for a big drink. No, wait, wait. Can I come? Now you take the mint. Actually, no, first of all, let's put some raspberry in it. Oh yeah, okay. Why raspberry? First, because you need, is a fruit, so you need to muddle. Two, three, some, just a handful. Yeah, you got raspberry. This is not a muddle, actually. This is the thing to make the, the dough. <laughs> I'm not using anything. If you have a spoon, if you have, I'm just saying in English, is a roller to make the dough. Okay, yeah. So, Smells good. You with me? Yeah. So they are muddle. Yeah. Perfect. Now you add the mint. Right. So, How much am I doing? A spray. So, don't don't take only the leaves. Just you see, just remove the bottom part, discard the bottom part, yeah, yeah. and keep the leaf and the stem. Okay. Just gentle, place inside, and gently, gentle, really gentle muddle. The mint doesn't have to be crushed. If you crush the mint, you're gonna get only the bitterness out of the of the mint. Yeah, gentle, really gentle, just a stir. You see. Doesn't have to be smashed, otherwise you got you, no, you the flavor. The people when you see the people muddle the mint so hard, mm -hmm. they completely destroy the, the, the mint flavor. You you lose the you lose the essence of the mint. Yeah. Then I think it's time to add uh, some yeah. boots. Now we're talking. Who, who doesn't drink? Don't don't skip this. Uh, <laughs> I'm laughing at Nancy Bridges. <laughs> how much? How much? 40 ml. I'm just going to guess it. You can even put 50, but I mean, 40, I think is enough. It's, uh, I mean, for the first one, I mean, it should, you shouldn't. Yeah. Got it. Okay, then we take the ice. So you can put ice cube, but if you want to have a crushed ice, you don't have the machine, of course, at home. You put the ice into the bag. Yeah. You take the armor, the one you use for your meat. Yeah. You do like that. Yeah. You got crushed ice. Sorry for the noise. No, I'm gonna have to call to get some ice. Then at the doorstep, I would never use end, but I can use end. This is my place. I'm gonna drink my drink. So add it some ice. You can use your hand, don't worry, eh? I mean uh, at the doorstep would never be, <laughs> never see me use that my hands. But... Here guys, the ice is here. Nice, a lot of ice. Yeah. In it goes. Don't be scared to use ice. Eh? More than, if you put just only less ice, uh, a small amount of ice, the, yeah. the drink is gonna dilute it very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then top up with your kombucha. Okay. Okay, for, who doesn't know what is kombucha? Kombucha is a, a very healthy drink made by yeast, tea, sugar, and water. Uh, you can make kombucha at home. You can buy the yeast uh, online. It's called Scooby, but if you don't want to make kombucha, you go in a shop, you go in a Holland Barrett uh, and you can find kombucha everywhere. Yeah. Okay, when you use kombucha, usually alcohol kills the bacteria that are in the kombucha. But kombucha is not only an healthy drink and a good drink because they contain bacteria, but contain also vitamin, minerals and probiotics. So don't be scared to put a bit of alcohol in your kombucha. Then you stir. Okay. And then uh, you should. Mine looks a bit like a pond. Did you put a lot of uh, You didn't put enough ice in it. Oh. So okay. if you don't put enough ice, your 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 ingredients they're gonna be floating on the top. Maybe that's the problem. So I think I might just drink it anyway. Cheers, everyone. And then, oh, you should garnish your drink because. 
when you garnish your drink, it looks beautiful and it's. It looks lovely. Lucia, what's your favorite cocktail to drink for yourself? Daiquiri. Oh, is it? The daiquiri what, is. What, uh, what kind of a one? Like a strawberry daiquiri or a. No, 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 no. no. Lime daiquiri. So lime, sugar, mm. and rum. Shake it. No ice, no frozen. No, no. Straight is a, is a kind of martini style drinks. Yes. Oh, or margarita as well, especially during this time of the year, getting hotter. So, so cheers, everybody. Thank you so much. Now, I think my colleague, Tomini, was making along. Are you there, Tomini? Did you make one just now? I'm going to be really sad if yours... Hi! There. Yes, I have made one. I just need to top it up and finish it quickly. Perfect. If you saw that, just a little bit. Eh? If, you use any, uh, if you don't use kombucha, but you use soda water or lemonade... There you go. Nice. Look at Tomini's one. It looks so good. Yeah, because if you don't, as, as I said, if you put less eyes, they're floating. Look at, look at nice. Very nice. Oh, thank you. And uh, just to let, let, last things, kombucha is a bit, um, can, can you feel a bit of vinegary taste in it? Yes, yes. So, I don't like kombucha very much. Say again? I don't like kombucha very much, generally speaking. It's um, better than rum in it, I find. I like the simple one, the, the plain one. Yes. The other one with passion fruit ginger is uh, a bit of, it's not really a real kombucha. It's something, it's kombucha with addiction in it. So okay. because it's a bit vinegary, if you, be, if you like a bit more sweeter, you can add, uh, you can, you can add a bit more sugar because I'm using raspberry. So they're quite citric, they're quite acid. If you use pineapple, it contains a lot of sugar by itself. So you don't have to add any Got it. Kombucha, you can skip kombucha, you can do a classic mojito and top it up with a bit of soda water. Soda water. Yes. Yeah. It's a very clever drink, this one. So I've loved it. Thank you so much. I think I could listen to you every it feels it just feels glamorous. You could be drinking tap water and you'd make it seem incredibly glamorous and exciting. Um, thank you so much. Now we have another incredible bartender with us this evening, Sam Fish, whose mum and dad live in the village where I grew up in Yorkshire. Unbelievable. Um, Sam, um, thank you so much for being here. Um, you're um, another award-winning bartender. You've won, listen to this list of things that Sam's won. Best bartender, best manager, best bar, and best good time bar. I mean, where do I sign Sam? This is, a this is an incredible CV. Um, a long time ago. <laughs> What are you going to make for us? If you're not into rum and kombucha and how's your father's, you've got, you've got a different drink for us to do. Yeah, but I think me and Lucia must have been like, there must have been some kind of telepathy going on because we've, we've both chosen rum and we've both kind of made twists on very classic cocktails. Okay. Um, so when uh, I spoke to Mark and he was, he was saying, you know, this kind of has to be based around, it'd be nice if it could be based around slow news and have a bit of a tortoise theme to it. Um, the first cocktail that sprung to mind was an old fashioned. Uh, now, an old fashioned cocktail, lots of people will probably have had it before. It's extremely classic, probably one of the most classic cocktails, originally just called the whiskey cocktail. Yeah. Um, but it needs a bit of care. It needs a bit of love. It needs attention. It takes a little bit of time, like not too much time. Sometimes you go into a bar and um, there's maybe too much ceremony taken over making the drink, should we say? But actually, um, yeah, you do need to take your time over and it. it kind of made me think that would be a really good doff of the cap to slow news. Nice. Um, but rather than just make a classic old fashioned, which most people will have had with bourbon, um, I'm a massive rum lover. Like rum is my favourite spirit. Um, the events company that I have, like the first ever event that we put on was a rum festival and that's like our little baby. Mm -hmm. So uh, I decided to make a rum version and more of a kind of springtime version as well. Right. Um, so we're going to need some freshly squeezed orange juice. Um, I've just let mine down with a little bit of water. So it's about kind of two to one sort of orange juice to water. Okay. Just ordinary orange yeah. juice like you get in a carton. Uh, no, we've used, I've used freshly squeezed. I and mean, you can use ju the juice that comes out of a carton. It just might give it a bit of a murky kind of color okay. when, we, when yep. we make the drink. Um, and then to that, oh, we're gonna need an orange, some rum, yeah. Um, some Angostura bitters, which I know some people have been asking about. So I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, some sugar and then some ice. And then, yeah, we're not going to use anything too fancy in this. Um, so Can you make it in a jam jar. This. So we're just going to make a really, a really quick um, orange syrup. Oh. Yeah. So basically, it's just fresh, freshly squeezed orange juice, let down with a little bit of water. 
and then I'd like a heaped sort of teaspoon of sugar to it just to speed things up because basically the sugar will dissolve perfectly I'm just going to give it a little shake and then you've got a really simple like orange syrup and you can keep this in your fridge it certainly keep like a weekend so if you wanted to make mojitos out of it or you know orange aid or whatever something more wholesome or just you know boozy drinks which is what I would do uh you can keep it in the fridge and make something out of it yeah so um, you can make this straight into the glass, like yeah. Lucia did with hers. Um, I'm just going to use a tin because it makes it easier to know when the drink is ready, uh, just because it starts to form. A cocktail tin, not a cocktail shaker. You can call it, yeah, I, we, I just call it a cocktail tin, but yeah, it, it is. this one is a shaker, it's got another part to it, um, but I'm just using the kind of bottom part of it, so like just a tin. Yeah. Um, we're going to use some of our orange syrup. Yeah. No, rather than just using, in an old-fashioned, you just use a regular sugar syrup. Uh, but this is just a, our orange syrup. And the great thing about this is you could add, um, if you wanted to kind of heat it up in a pan to melt the sugar, you could add a cinnamon stick, some star anise, like some other, you could make like a spicy orange syrup. You can, it's super easy. And then you can keep it in the fridge and make whatever you want out of it. Um, I'm going to use rum. This is one of my favourites. This is a brand new bottle because I drank my last one. And this is a... Uh, Compañero, which is the Compañero is a brand owned by a guy called Joshua Singh, uh, who lives in Denmark. And he's basically traveled around the Caribbean choosing nice. different kind of plantations that make amazing rum and kind of bringing some back with him and making amazing rum back in Europe. Uh, so this rum is actually from. Sorry for me to look into the business, actually, James, if you're listening. The part where I go around the Caribbean trying all the rums, I think we should probably get onto that. Would be a great thinking. It yeah. makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. But um, I'd love to join you. But the, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Compañero, the, the rum, the base of this rum is from Panama. Um, so Panamanian rum tends to be quite light and dry. So what they've done is they've added cacao nibs to this. So this is actually a flavoured rum. Um, but it's not your usual kind of spice drink that you get in the supermarket. This stuff is like 54%. So it will knock your socks off. Oh. Um, but it is brilliant for making old fashions with. Personally, you make this with whiskey. Normally, you could do it with whiskey, or would it not be nice with the orange? Yeah, it definitely would work. You could use pretty much any spirit. It's like similar to what Lucia was saying with mojito. Like, I mean, I haven't seen a gin old fashioned, but I'm pretty sure someone's probably tried to make one. Uh, I've seen vodka old fashions, tequila, mezcal. I mean, originally it was rye whiskey, which is like a super spicy whiskey, but now it's really commonly seen with bourbon. Um, but I love them with rum. It's like you will see them with rum. But for me, it needs a good kind of about 75 ml of, uh, of rum or whiskey to make it a really decent drink. So it is super boozy, but in theory, it should last you longer. Um, again, I'm going to use my hands because I'm the only one who's going to drink this. Uh, and then I'm going to pop some ice in um, and we're going to finish with some Angostura bitters. So Angostura. How big was the measure of rum that just went in there? Sorry. It looks so like three shots. So it's like a triple. I would use, yeah, nice. pretty big. Like a Katie Bannock type of magic. Right, Angostura bitters, I know what they are. Yeah, so Angostura bitters are like the, they're like almost like the spice cabinet to making drinks. So you wouldn't be able to add like raw spices into making a cocktail because it would just taste foul. Uh, so what some clever sausage did was they basically steeped herbs and spices in a really kind of high, ABV neutral grain spirit kind of like a vodka but like it'll be like 90 percent and you just leave it and then you kind of strain it through a cheesecloth and you're left with this kind of super funky I mean Angostura bitters is flavored with like cinnamon cloves nutmeg all kinds of stuff but I think the main flavor that people will be able to pick out is clove but it's like using salt and pepper in food it's just enhances the flavor of the drink really yeah. um so I like quite a lot so I would add three dashes um but some people might have more might have less this is another great thing about this drink is it's completely adaptable uh so you don't have to kind of make it as i'm telling you you can sort of put less sugar in it you can put more in um it's really kind of up to up to the individual now does it you know the whole james bond thing yeah does it actually matter if you stir or if you shake it does matter because um, some cocktails do need stirring because they need a more gentle dilution. Um, some cocktails like will need shaking because they just need that kind of really strong dilution. If yeah. you tried to shake an old fashioned, it just over dilute it really. And you just end up with kind of a bit of a water in there. And it also, when you shake a cocktail, it really breaks the ice up that's in there and you end up with kind of 
shard of ice in it whereas a martini or an old-fashioned you just want to be a bit more gentle with it really so that's kind of it's what made me think about slow news and like being a bit more gentle and the great thing is like you could just pop the ice in here and go off you know get yourself some cheese out of the fridge make yourself a little snack or whatever it is and just kind of let it brilliant plan yeah just let it sit there and do its thing and uh, and eventually it'll kind of be ready so the great thing about let's say make it in the tin is eventually you'll start to see kind of ice crystals form on the outside of the tin and that means that it's ready to go pretty much it is just a case of being patient with this thing really and what are you looking for how do you know when it's done when you've stirred it enough does it change texture or something so surprisingly with um with stirred drinks you're actually looking at about a fifth to a quarter of additional dilution so that's you're adding quite a lot of water into the drink okay. but you really you know when people say like they don't want to drink with water whiskey with water um you know i'm not saying who's right or wrong in that argument but it's um it's all the water does is kind of separate the flavour and make it easier to pull out the kind of subtle nuances that are in the spirit. So if you were tasting a spirit and like it was kind of just a bit over facing, you add a drop of water to it and it just makes the whole thing much easier to drink. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of being patient with it really and just having the occasional taste and just really just checking when it's ready, you'll kind of, you'll know because it will be to your sort of taste. I'm going to pop fresh ice into my glass because we've, the idea is that we've achieved the right amount of dilution while making the drink. Huge ice cubes. Huge ice cubes. Yeah, I'm a, well, I'm a bartender. I have to have fancy bar ice cubes at home. But that's just me showing off, really. But yeah, a normal bag of ice from Zainsbury's is fine. But I will just use my fingers, as Lucia did. Oh, so you're holding the ice in the thing? Yeah. The the drink itself pours out yeah and then you just get left with like a really beautiful old fashioned and it's nice to have the ice kind of peeking over the top because as it kind of as it dilutes and it'll kind of sink into itself a little bit more it actually it's a great drink that actually gets better the like the longer that you leave it yeah. and then what we're using from the orange is not the the juice or anything we're just going to use the skin of the orange because there's all these oils in there that give this wonderful aroma and we're just going to kind of squeeze them over the top of the drink might have been able to show you like sometimes you can kind of see the oils coming out but if you just kind of twist the peel over the top of the drink you'll be able to smell how amazing the top of the drinks looks um yeah and that's it this is a slow and sunny in will, will, will the ice cream not biff you on the nose when you go in for a sip i guess it would i quite like to kind of mess around with it a bit i quite like to kind of stir it with my finger and kind of let it kind of let it do its thing um and it does get tastier as it kind of as, as the drink sort of like although it doesn't last very long in my I was going to say so two questions first question is how long really is it a, an appropriate amount of time to sink that cocktail <laughs> and then the second question is in my team today Phoebe was giving a lot of big chat that if you can't find Angostura bitters you just set fire to an orange and it does the same job true or false um firstly i say an acceptable i suppose it depends what the drink is but i think when you're drinking cocktails i like to think like three or four songs is usually about the right amount of time to drink a cocktail i like it I like it, it. it usually gives me an idea of whether i want to stay in that bar or not it's like three or four songs in right i like this i can have a drink and um and uh, what the orange peel does is it leaves like orange aromas on the top of the drink which is what burning orange would do uh mm -hmm. what these what these do and you can get lots of different types of bitters these are just one kind so you can get rhubarb bitters celery bitters oh can you yeah you can get all kinds of things so celery bitters would be used in like a bloody mary you can get rhubarb bitters to flavor maybe gin drinks it's like you can get all kinds of things but these are just the most common ones that we find and these are just a, a huge array of different kind of herbs and spices so this will just add depth and complexity more than maybe like an orange peel would but it's certainly like another way to add a botanical to a drink using the orange peel brilliant i've loved it thank you so much um sam and i'm just completely taken with as somebody who is i would say a cocktail cynic largely out of laziness i must confess just because of the faff and i'd rather just neck a glass of wine i think it's delicious i'm really enjoying my kombucha mojito i think i should be more willing to take the time to make what is essentially a, as much effort as i would put into making dinner into making a pre-dinner drink Thank you very much. I'm going to bring, I'm going to go now to Katie, who is tortoise 
co-founder extraordinaire who I would think will be drinking gin because she does like a gin. It's empty. Oh no. And you're in the garden as well. So can you I not? Know. No, no, no. I've sent the, the, the weeper husband. So when James <laughs> said, oh, I'm a bit of a weeper, all I could think was, oh my God, I married a weeper. And now I'm in business with a weeper. Um, I, the, my weeper of a husband, who's a very lovely man, but does weep, as you know, Liz. Uh, he's, and he, cryo, it's true. he's making me a Negroni right now. So that that will be lovely. That will turn up at some point. So, Katie, um, you've been involved in Tussles, not quite from the very, very beginning, but pretty much. Um, what's been the highlight so far, would you say? What are you proud of? Oh my God, that is a massive question, Liz. Um, do you know, I'm proud of how much fun we have. I mean, actually we work really, really hard. So if anyone thinks that slow news means that we are tortoises in our own behavior, that is absolutely not true. We're very hair-like. And, um, uh, but what I'm really proud of, I'm proud of the 100,000 you just mentioned, but actually I'm, what I'm more proud of is that we built something that genuinely is, as James said, welcoming. I mean, just I was reading some of the chat, you know, of people sort of saying how much tortoise has meant to them during lockdown, how much it's meant to them, you know, to be able to join these conversations during what's been a really tough year. And I'm reminded of the, the other time that James didn't talk about that he weeped slightly and had to hold it back, which was when we were in our newsroom in East Castle. And we had, do you remember when we did those member breakfasts? Yeah, of course. Totally bring them back. They were, they were so good. So the members would come in for breakfast and we'd ask them sort of what they wanted us to do more of or less of. And there was this one member who said, I think what we need to do. And James just welled up <laughs> and then started talking about the fact, oh my God, you really think, you're, like we told you we were building a newsroom with and for our members. And you really believe it. You think that like we're one thing and it was just lovely. So I think I'm proudest of the fact that, you know, you can choose to get involved in tortoise in so many ways. But but really, for me, it's the thinking. It's what we're doing tonight whilst drinking, obviously, which is my favorite <laughs> type of thinking, Liz, um, as you well know. Um, it is the thinking for me that really makes us really different. And um, now James has sort of jumped off. I like to describe a thinking as like part lecture. So often I turn up at a thinking and I can just sit back and I can listen to the editor hosting a couple of invited guests, but also just our members, just how much experience, knowledge, the things they're prepared to come share with us. And the fact they take the time to help us with our journalism is just extraordinary. And it's just, every time we have a thinking, I find it amazing. But I describe a thinking as part lecture part dinner party because actually it does feel like you're with your friends and part meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous which is very <laughs> helpful for this evening because there is a sort of element of a thinking that feels a little bit like therapy you know you're sort of loosely oh, yeah. enforced you loosely enforce no question rule I love the fact that people come and they're honest and they bring themselves and their stories and their experiences to our newsroom and it really is it, it isn't like anything else that exists. And I think that's really special. So whilst the sense maker's amazing, our stories are brilliant, our audio output is exceptional. For me, the thing that is really, the thing I'm most proud of is the fact that we open up our newsroom every day and we host thinkings. Yeah. And okay. um, you know, it, for me, that's the thing. That's why after 25 years at News Corps, which is officially a life sentence, um, after 25 years in the Times, the Sunday Times Sun, the Wall Street Journal, coming and founding something like Tortoise with James and you lot, the members and everyone at Tortoise, the thinking for me is the thing that every single day I feel really proud that we've done. Thanks, Katie. Um, I'm very proud too and exhausted, I must You confess. should be. Well, not exhausted, <laughs> but you should be proud. Yeah, true. Um, I'm going to come to um, somebody who is very big, big part of Team Tortoise, but who I don't know if has ever spoken on a digital thinking i don't know michelle henderson are you there in stealth attack mode our chief operating officer hello michelle hello hello Hi. everybody so michelle is really the person who keeps the whole goddamn show on the road she drinks gin let's say in in what there you go in quantities michelle you've been in it from the beginning as well what's what's your reflections on the first two years Blimey, where do I begin? Um, 
Well, Katie, uh, Katie and I. Yeah, don't it's swear. It's Michelle can't get a sentence out without the F word, so this is yeah, challenging. Right. I, I do have Tourette's. Um, so Katie and I have worked together for many, many years, and we were both working abroad. And Katie contacted me saying, when are you coming back to the UK? And I said, oh, shortly. And she said, oh, I'm going to join a startup. And I nearly fell off my chair at that point, um, given Katie was this big corporate animal. And she said, oh, uh, can you come and help us? And I was about, I said, well, I've got plans when I get back, but I can do a few days a week for, um, you know, for about six weeks. Anyway, um, gosh, nearly three years later, here I am. And it's just been the most amazing journey. Uh, when I first joined Tortoise, I think there was five of us. Uh, we shared an office space with um, a group of people we didn't know, but liked really loud music pumping all day long. Um, we had to pack up our desks every night, which was really annoying and put them in little cubby holes. Uh, and when I joined, we didn't even have email addresses. That was one of the first things I did, and it felt quite an achievement at the time to settle on what do we call ourselves and what email addresses shall we have? <laughs> and uh, we, we've just grown and grown, and it's just been the most remarkable journey. And I always say you have to step down into a startup mm. and roll your sleeves up and do things that you've forgotten how to do, but relish learning all over again. And it, it's just been... The, the most brilliant thing and having um, worked with uh, Katie elsewhere and run, you know, big call centre operations and, it, you know, being part of big member organisations, the thing that really stunned me the most was when we open our doors to members for the first time and we got a flurry of feedback, typically it would be, what's my password? I can't log in. And it wasn't that at all for us. It was very much um, ideas, commenting on what we were doing. And I was just completely blown away and had never experienced that in, you know, I've been working 25 years now and, and just never experienced the member love and feedback that we've got. So um, it has been a roller coaster, I would say. Um, we still feel like we're in a startup. Um, we still, uh, fly by the seat of our pants, I would say, and we are definitely not tortoise-like. How we operate internally, uh, we paddle very, very hard, but it, it's just, it's a really special thing to be part of. I always remember my very first thinking, um, and that's when I really felt the magic. And it, it was in White City, um, I, I can't remember where it was, outside the BBC, I think, ironically and uh, uh, David Lammy was there and a few other invited guests and we were still playing around with the format how do we sit um is it in a semicircle are we in rows and um it, it that's when I really got it and, and that's when I was hooked and uh, it's just a privilege to be part of it and also the team you know it's wonderful to be part of a startup because you recruit people you genuinely want to work with rather than you um you know, you join a team and there's some people you like, some people that you work with. Um, but I genuinely say we spend a lot of time and effort. We, we say no to more people than we say yes to, that's for sure. Um, and it, it's just fantastic. It's frustrating, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's a lot of fun in the process as well. Oh, well, we bloody love you, Michelle. Don't know how you do it. The woman is a machine. She's so lovely. And they've had a rubbish couple of weeks. So um, thank you so much for all you do to kind of keep us going and um, I'm gonna let's obviously it's a thinking it's already quarter past seven because we've bought on so long um I want to hear from some um members and I've just seen Andrew Girdwood um who is a stalwart thinking contributor um Andrew I don't think I've met you before we went digital because you're root north aren't you that's right uh yeah. yes and we, you just put this lovely note in the chat, which is thank you to all the other people who who piled in. So I can see people that I feel super familiar with today, some of whom I knew from before. So there's Lisa G with her star behind her and normally sitting on the floor. Hi, Lisa. And then tons of people. There's obviously Lynn, there's Louise Simpson, there's Daniel Dipper, there's William Jeremy in his cupboard. And Andrew, you're kind of one of our real kind of constant where well, you're our conscience, you're a challenge to us, you pile in at the uh, um, on, on the chat. Um, tell us what's been your best bit and what thing about tortoise bugs you that we need to sort out? Oh, God, that's uh, two curveballs. 
I, I think the best, but I'm going to treat, but I, I, I mean it, I really think the community is uh, fantastic. So it's been, a, it, it, it could have been a nightmare year, but I've learned so, so much from thinkings. Um, I, and I, I mean it, it's from members as well as the Tortoise team. Mm. Uh, and it's been, it's been absolutely lovely. Uh, I often get um, poked by friends say, you would make so much money if you just freelance. Why are you do working for an agency? Mm. And I'm, I, I'm not sure they're right, because uh, I'm not very bright, but I, I love surrounding myself with intelligent people at work. And that's why I work in an agency. And I think I get that same vibe from uh, the, the Tortoise crew. I mean, it's just, it's just brilliant. So, you know, I, um, but what would I change? know well write to me a private email maybe <laughs> if i think of anything i'll let you know yeah do, do send me a list send me a list thanks so much it's lovely to see you and and what about jennifer allerton are you there jennifer are you there jennifer yes um, Hi, nice to see you now um, listen have i ever met you in real life or only in the zoom no i um I met Polly Curtis when Polly was still yeah. talking, um, at a network event. Um, so I had a network membership that started in March last year. And then um, I, I loved everything I got out of it over the past year so much. I was like, I'm definitely going to pay for a year of membership this year. And then it was lovely that it was renewed for network wow. members for another year because of lockdown. So that was really lovely and generous. Um, and yeah, I was, I, I should say, I'm not normally sat, I'm <laughs> on my little brother's bedroom floor at the moment because he, um, the ice is kept in his mini fridge in his room. So when I came to get ice for my drink, I just was like, oh, I'll just dump the laptop here and sit on his bedroom floor. So um, yeah, <laughs> it's not my normal surroundings. Um, but yeah, I left a, a job that I loved in, September because I had awful mental health issues during lockdown um and that was rubbish but I, I also talked about that at Thinkins um uh and that like you say it, it was kind of you know like sharing it with a community and with friends in a way um I know Jess Phillips was at one and oh, I then was in APPG with her a couple of weeks later I mentioned it in chat and she brought it up again um and it, it was all about you know not having my sick pay wouldn't have been enough for me to carry on living where I was so I I'm now living at my parents yay um but yeah everything I've got out of of tortoise and being in thinkings and the community is sort of linking to other groups and finding out about things through things people have mentioned um has helped me as well and just sort of being in this community and sharing things and knowledge that I've had from things that I've done um, and the work that I was doing it kind of made me remember that like I have I am a valuable you know member of this community and other Definitely. So it's lovely to have that Oh, good. Well, it's been a real pleasure to have you, Jennifer. I know you've you've weighed in with some brilliant contributions to Thinkins in the past. And it's a funny thing, when I come to a Thinking, particularly when I, I mean, I'm sure that you can't tell, but particularly when I'm talking about a subject about which I know very little, um, it's really, really nice feeling to see names pop up in the list of people in the room who I sort of feel like I can rely on and I know, and I know they'll sort of be able to push me and you know move the conversation on it's a really nice feeling as an editor that you just not sort of at sea it feels like we're sort of um amongst friends and you all bring your brains as well I don't know how you've got the energy at 6 30 every day to sort of bring your full brain and effort to the table um when we're talking about stuff so I love that now I hope he knows that I'm gonna well he probably would have guessed but is Paul Atherton there you're in the chat Paul you've had some good news today I have are you all right? Nice. I'm alive. I'm alive. This is as best things get these days. Yes. We are alive and we're here and He's we have wine. So yes. everything well, is fine. Picking <laughs> all the boxes. Paul, now Paul, yes. you were there at the infamous drinking where I served strong Negronis to the crowd <laughs> and was somewhat the worst for wear by about quarter past six. Um, how are you doing? What's tortoise meant to you over the last couple of years? That sort of thing. Um, it's been invaluable. 
in, in truth. Uh, from when I was at Heathrow, uh, where I was sleeping at the time just before lockdown, to be able to contribute to something with a group, as everybody says, with a group of intelligent people was literally life-saving. You just find kind of, there are people out there that you, you feel that you can connect with. They're, they're on the same level as you are. You may not agree, and that's the other thing I love about Tortoise is very rarely do you ever have sort of unnecessary conflict. You, you'll have differing opinions and you'll come to different conclusions, but there is a respect amongst the members that you wouldn't find, say, on Twitter or social media. Yeah. Um, and, and that's one of the things I love about the, the space more than anything else. Um, but obviously, I, I, I contributed letters from lockdown, which was fabulous again, because that allowed me a, a little bit more raise of profile. Uh, there was a piece about a lot of people who were experiencing things under COVID that I was able to contribute to. But yeah, coming in the room is it just makes you part of, of a group of people and an organization that you feel reflects your ethos and your morals. Mm -hmm. um, and we can tell stories in a way that no one else is going to do. And I think that's what makes us special. And as you say, the little bit of good news, I'm in everyone in accommodation here in Marlebone at the moment. I've been under the constant threat of eviction since everyone in finished in July. So every month or so, I've, I've, I've got a battle Westminster Council to keep going. But they were going to kick me out yesterday. And in fact, they kicked everybody else out. But because I had a bit of press coverage, they let me stay here for another month. Oh, really? So thank you ever so much, as always, for having me on. Um, and thank you for everybody's amazing work. It's really, really appreciated. Oh, thanks so much, Paul. What, what I would say about Paul is, we see him sometimes <clears throat> sometimes on thinkings but what you probably don't all see that sort of me and james and dave and others is that paul is unbelievably generous with his time and insights and he's also met everyone in the world i teased him once i was like i bet you i bet you're part of the royal family at some point and he's like well actually i did meet phil and charles and i'm like the man is everywhere he's everywhere in london um incredibly generous with your with your stories and your and your insight paul so appreciate that um same with uh, tons of people i wonder if fliss i can spy fliss looking incredibly glad glamorous down there on the bottom corner of my screen. Hiya Fliss. Hello. Now you've known James Harding for a long time is what I was saying. I have, yeah, and for my sins. Yet still somehow works for him. Yeah. Again, for your sins. So <laughs> tell us about your tortoise story and um, how are you feeling? What's your reflections on the last couple of years? You've obviously well, it's been quite chaotic. I mean life with James is is typically chaotic but um you know the doing the startup has been yeah it's been hard work but it's been such a huge amount of fun um i think if we're doing favorite moments um there was that moment when we were at the bbc and he sort of sat me down at the table and he was like right so it's now whenever you have to make your mind up <laughs> what are you doing and i was like okay i'm coming with you um and at that point didn't really understand anything then he said that he had um secured katie she's the right word and i thought oh thank god um because katie's obviously got all this business know-how and marketing expertise and everything um and i thought yeah that's a, an amazing marriage but then you've got like not a literal marriage by the way this is not a, rich not a literal mar marriage no no um <laughs> But then, like, because um, Katie was stuck in the States, so, um, you know, we were over in the UK trying to get things, and Katie's like, Michelle's going to come along. And it's like, okay, fine. But then when Michelle turns up, you're like, oh, thank God, she's amazing. She knows what she's doing. And, yeah, just um, just the chaos of, of, of life in a startup, finding offices, deciding what colour you're going to paint the walls, but also, you know, designing... Um, membership systems you know so that we can really keep in touch with everybody uh just the concept of the thinking is magical and oh, yeah and katie and james have just absolutely yeah. um so one i mean it's, it's amazing doesn't everybody think it's just such a fantastic concept and well worth all the hard work thanks so much um fliss it's lovely to have you back and i think you look incredible incredibly glamorous I'm going to make Liv talk now. So Liv lives in the guise of tortoise thinking. And she spent all of the last 12 months in that cupboard, as you see her there. Hello, Liv. Hi. Hello. 
Hi. Um, hello. Um, but before the world was locked down, you spent most of your life touring the world's worst B&Bs for Tortoise on the Road. And on one of those occasions, when I was going around doing those member breakfasts that Katie talked about, we went to Manchester. Would you like to tell the group what happened when we went to Manchester? So we're a startup, so I very much was holding the budget that, um, you know, it was my money. And so I was always cutting corners and I uh, booked an apartment for Liz and I. And uh, we travelled up together where I was very, very ill on the train and we got to Manchester very late and uh, they wouldn't let us into the apartment. We were stuck outside for maybe uh, half an hour in the freezing cold. We got into the apartment. Do you remember the wind, Liv? It was 11 p.m. It was so cold, the biting wind. And you know, in Manchester, when it gets cold, it gets like cold to your bones cold. It was so cold and we were there for a long time. Carry on the story. Um, oh, I feel so awful. So I managed to get Liz, uh, we managed to get into the apartment block and a gentleman walked us up to the room and he said, you are not allowed to stay in this room unless you give me all of this money. I was like, I've already paid with it through work. And he was like, but you haven't. And I have a key and you have a key. Um, he very kindly let us stay, but Liz and I were a little nervous. So we pushed a sofa against the, um, the door to the room and we both slept with our eyes open and our bags packed. It was so bad. The man said, um, you need to pay for the room now. And Liv explained that we already had. He said, fine, just give me your credit card details. But don't worry, because I only live in the apartment down the hall. So I'll be there the whole time. So when we didn't lose our lives to the murder apartment in Manchester, um, then we came back and, and negotiated a, a higher per night budget for the overnight stays on Tortoise Local. So this is what we mean. We risk our literal lives for Tortoise. Um, it's half past seven. I've enjoyed so much my cocktail, but look, there's still a little dribble in there. I'm going to have another one. I just want to say to Lucia and to Sam, if they're still there, um, thank you so, so much to both of you for coming along and for being glamorous and knowledgeable and friendly and brilliant. I've learned more about cocktails in the last hour than I have in all of my up to now 44 years. And it's my birthday soon. So maybe I'll have cocktails, who knows? Um, I'm thrilled that you're um, going to soon be reopening um, the bar and you'll be able to have your in-person rum festivals rather than your digital festivals. Mark's check, um, put links to um, Sam's um, a business which is called Rolling Social which do check it out because um, it's brilliant and if you you know heaven forbid we like get locked in again um, then get Sam on the case and she'll cheer you right up. Um, I would just like to say to you all thank you for this evening, thank you for the last two years or two months, however long you've been part of it. Well done to Team Tortoise for making it um, this far. It is hard yards sometimes, but I think this evening has shown us that um, I think uh, we're doing something right. We're not doing everything right, we're doing something right. So I feel very proud to be part of it. Um, uh, everybody go and have a lovely dinner. Enjoy the long weekend and we will see you on the other side of Easter for open news on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Bring a pen, bring your brains, be brilliant. Thanks so much, everybody. Happy birthday to us. Mm -hmm.